Good morning. Welcome once again to Garden America. Your friends, your garden buddies, that's us. I'm Brian Maine. John Bagnasco to my right. Tiger Palafox to my left. We are back in studio having a good time prior to the show and hoping for a good time. Of course, we'll have a good time during the show as well. So hope you had a good week. Uh, some of us have a three-day weekend, President's Day, coming up on Monday. What about oh, yeah. you, Tiger? Does, does the gardening stop for you? I, You know, I stopped keeping track of holidays. I, I just... You know, like I'm, all, I'm always yeah, I'm always working. There's always something going right, on, right. and I'm just like, oh, other people have the day off. Nice, that's cool. Well, normally in radio, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Radio never stops. And in the old days, I would work seven I, days a week. I was gonna say that's the old days because I come here sometimes, and there's this is a ghost town because everything is voice tracked. It's recorded. Yeah. It's put into the computer, and they send the shows all over the country or here in San Diego. Nobody has to be here. Yeah. It's a lot different. But gardening never ceases. No. And uh, John is a good example of that. John, you had a fun week, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I did have a fun week. I told you I planted in the last two weeks, maybe three weeks, I've planted 100 roses. And I'm so excited to get them in the ground. Yeah. It's like, um, Think, what are you going to do with all that time? Not having to water in pots this summer. I have so many things that I don't do because I'm watering. Yeah. That Something else will done. take its place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping to um, – I, I was telling you before the show that I was hoping to go to uh, uh, Rosa Belgica in June, which is in Brussels, and then go from there to Zangerhausen, which has been on my bucket list. Yeah. Uh, Didn't we have that on our list at one, one of the time, trips a while back. Garden America? Yeah. We were going to, and then uh, Matthew at Garden uh, or Earthbound, Earthbound Expeditions said, you know what? That's like going to Cooperstown. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing near it. Yeah. So That's it. That's the only only thing there, right? So right. So I was thinking of maybe going on my own, but Yeah. You should. Now I'm I want sure to go to Cooperstown. <laughs> Let's take some some listeners and viewers to Cooperstown. And the Football Hall of Fame at the same time. You know, there's a uh, Rose Hall of Fame, miniature Rose Hall of Fame. Oh. Yeah, but you got a duck to get in, right? <laughs> it's for the little roses. <laughs> the little roses. We don't call them miniature. We like to call them little roses. Yeah. Or, or vertically vertically challenged. <laughs> right. Roses. We hope that you had a good week, everyone that's tuned in right now, uh, whether you're listening back to a podcast, Biz Talk Radio, live on Facebook, YouTube. We're everywhere. Hey, go to our website, GardenAmerica.com. It changes. It does. It's not the same website. There's little things that we change. You have uh, links to just about every place that you can listen to us. And good stories about where right. plants Articles. come from, where are the plant hunters that, that found these plants. Or, you know, if John's written an article, it's something involving roses and how you can eat the hips or um, grow and bud your own roses. Hey, or eat my harvest hips. them from seed. <laughs> Eat my hips. That's going to be John's bumper sticker. Eat my hips. <laughs> oh, so it's cold though. Do um, baby, it's cold outside. Do do you see a change in your plants? Not not just your roses, but your plants at your house because we've been pretty mild up until this point, and I feel like it's dropped temperatures. It's 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 simply not cold like. We're, we're, we're I not... would say this month is the coldest month we've had in several years. I would right? agree, consistently. Do you think right. so? I feel like I remember a few years back we had some severe frost, you know, you know that was actually affecting crops and plants. I think what John's saying is yeah. it's kind of – because that, right. that would come and go. Yeah. This okay, has been so kind this of a sustained consistent? cold. Okay. Right. You know, okay, well, we had snow one year, sleet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that like Brian that says, was one, day. one day, right? Yeah. But you still got your mail, right? <laughs> I don't know. I have so, to, I can't remember. So you think the average low has been for an extended period of time this this time around this month? I, I think this month at my house, I've had probably five to ten nights in the thirties. Okay, which is unusual. Yeah. yeah. I I haven't had a hard freeze, but I think I did get down to thirty three one night, which is pretty cold. Yeah, we would know if John had a hard freeze because, he, as we talk about, he's one of those people that likes to push the envelopes on plants sometimes, and you get worried about specific plants. Well, you know the plant I'm worried about. The bougainvillea tree. Is the, yeah, the bougainvillea tree. Yeah. Have you lost anything yet? <sighs> yeah, Don't but you know what? It. it was in my closet. I found it. <laughs> well, it's warmer in there. Yeah. yeah. That's a good place to find it. Yeah. 
Uh, um, have I lost any plants? I, to I, the cold. Yeah, I yeah. don't, don't think so. Gophers and lack of care. That's different. Yeah. I did yeah. lose one plant recently to a gopher, but... Um, and I've sent a gopher trap this last week, probably every single day. And every single day the trap's gone off and I haven't ca- caught the gopher. Really? So gophers are year-round. They don't take any seasons off, do they? Whether it's hot, cold, warm? No, no. And I don't think we get – you know, and that's we, – we've, we've talked about this before. In Southern California, the issue is that we don't get, we don't get cold or hot enough for things to take time off. Like you're saying, like yeah. in places where it gets severe winter – you have to take time. Yeah, off. it's it's way too we're, cold. We're kind of right in the middle. There. And then and then in places that get extreme heat, you know, again, you have to take time off. It gets too hot outside. Death we're, Valley, for example. Yeah, right. You're not out there at noon walking around. Now next week's going to be cool again, right? And it'll maybe a little bit rainy. Yeah. So the temperatures in the 50s and 60s but, for the but, whole but, rain's on the but, way. But you know that the rain is going to bring up the temperatures, so it's not going to be as cold. Right. Well, it, you know that I was looking at the temperatures, and during the rain is the coldest really so it's one of those cold fronts huh? yeah oh they mean the upcoming rain coming yeah that because usually, usually is... tiger's right that it, it rains and yeah. it's warmer and then right. the, then the rain goes away and it gets uh, uh, no right. clouds and then it's freezing outside so well, that's when you get a frost like yeah. Yeah. right after the rain and the clouds yeah. are gone so speaking of, of of temperatures and how cold it's been consistently have we had like more rain too this year yes than, than normal yes i would think that so is true. somebody said in a two-week period we had more rain in that two-week period than in the history of we, California. We average across the board ten inches a year, and I don't know what it is, but you know, let's say right now we are at sixteen or something. Ten inches just, seems a lot, though. Really, ten inches. Uh, that's an average. average. That's an yeah. average. That's when you look at I don't know how many years of weather tracking that we've done. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. But as we know, we go up and down. You know, we've also been in a drought for yeah. During three that two week years. period, I had fourteen inches at my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a lot, John. That that's that's a lot. It is. And uh, you but, don't flood, um, though. Hey, you're, you're okay. You don't flood, right? No, everything's on top of the hill. It all goes, goes down. down everything's, I, I, everything's downhill from we, here. We, we we talk about plants that I lost. I am currently losing a rosemary. Um, as because, we speak, as we speak, it is dying because it's kind of at the a low point in my property, right? And it, it's sitting in wet soil. And there's really? nothing I can do for it. It's been there for almost two years, though. But I can see it. You could put drainage in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, like, yeah that's, that's, it's a rosemary. Yeah, you know. Sorry. People suggested that. But, yeah. You know. Hey, so what are we going to be talking about today for those that do not get the newsletter? Because we always put in the subject matter in the newsletter. Well, right? I thought we should talk about, uh, we, and we always talk about anything related to gardening. So if we get any questions on Facebook, we're happy to answer those questions. Sure. But I thought maybe we should talk a little bit about um, different types of fruit trees because mm-hmm. now's the time to be planting those in either deciduous trees or, or uh, citrus avocados. And, of course, if you want to take the uh, show in a different Sub-trop- direction. Subtropical fruits. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about anything, yeah. really. But let's, let's, uh, let's discuss fruit trees uh, to kick things off. And the uh, quote of the week, is that up and ready to go? Or should I talk a little bit slower while John gets it out of his phone? Oh, of course it's up and ready to up go. Up and running, ready to go. The quote yeah. of the week. If you get the newsletter, you can subscribe by going to our website, GardenAmerica.com. You've probably seen the quote. So for those that have I thought this it, was an interesting quote, right? It says, the superfluous, which I've never used that, seen that word in a quote before. Wait, it's a good one. Superfluous. superfluous. Okay, the superfluous yeah. blossoms on a fruit tree are meant to symbolize the large way God loves to do pleasant things. Mm. I thought that was, and that was from Henry Ward Beecher. You know what his daughter's name was, right? <laughs> you know, my mind is just yeah. a swirl. Henry right Ward now. Beecher, yeah. and then his daughter's name. His daughter was an author. Something Beecher. Harriet Beecher Stowe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Harriet. <laughs> I don't think they called Har- Harriet Harry. Harry. <laughs> Harry. Harriet. So we have a lot of people. But I like... thought that was interesting. Yeah. I mean, picture a fruit tree, and none, and those aren't all going to be fruits, right? right? There's a lot of extra blossoms there. Yeah. But he looked at the tree. It, you know, it just shows you the way God likes to do pleasant things. Yeah. 
A lot of people are tuned in already on Facebook, ready to go, raring to go as well. So, uh, as John mentioned, I remember that line. I think I've told you this line before. It was in the Yearling. Did you, do you have you seen that movie? Long time ago. Yeah. Have you seen it, Tiger? No. You know what? Your kids should watch that movie. I, yearling. We're the up Yearling. The yearling. Right. We're up yeah. against the uh, clock. You want to wait yeah. till the other side? No, because it's not worth holding over. But it Go was ahead. there was just a line in it where uh, Jody, the son, goes to his dad, Gregory Peck, uh, about his mother. She's a rare and pa. <laughs> <laughs> Gregory Peck. All righty. It is uh, break time here on Garden America, our first break. A second segment coming up. We've got uh, commercials. We have sponsorships on BizTalk Radio, so welcome. By the way, on BizTalk Radio, this is last week's show. It is Garden America, Brian Maine, John Begnasker, Tiger Pelafox. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio and more of Garden America. Welcome back to the show, those on BizTalk Radio, those on Facebook Live. It is good to have you along. Again, we discussed uh, the fact that uh, prior to the break, we discussed uh, today's topic, fruit trees, so on and so forth. But anything on your mind you need uh, an answer to, of course, you can take this show in whatever direction you would like. That's what it's all about here on Garden America. We've done the so on. We're ready for the so forth. The so forth. The so on was the first segment. Right. Now it's the so forth. So, John, you mentioned talking about fruit trees, and your quote talked about the flowers on trees. Um, so I thought it'd be a good place to start as far as flowers and fruit and what that means in the sense of the flowers are going to be the fruit on right. a tree, whether it's an orange, an apple, guava, whatever it may be. An indication of what you're going to get? Right. No, I, and no, I don't think that the flower is an indication of what you're going to get. The flower looks nothing like an apple. Right? But like you mentioned, there's, let's say, thousands of flowers. Do you know that flower never disappears now that he brought up an apple? A flower never disappears. In now the Even when it turns right. into a, uh, an apple... If you look at the end, not the stem end, but the other end, uh, there's the there there that's is the remain of the little flower. Yeah, yeah. You that know little what? button. When I was you... a kid, I wondered what that was. Yeah, what's that little fuzzy thing down there? Yeah. <laughs> are they fuzzy? I don't think on apples they are. Because it's, it's, it's a dead, it's a dead flower, dried dried yeah. leaves, right? Yeah, not fuzzy. Yeah, probably not fuzzy, but yeah. kind of. Yeah. But uh, point but, well taken. But anyways, there's thousands of flowers, but you do not get thousands of fruit. Right. Right. There's something that happens that a makes the flower turn into a fruit. And then B, we all know too that not every fruit stays on that tree. Sometimes they fall off early, um, you know, or, you know, don't develop. So first off, in order for it to turn into a fruit, it has to be pollinated, right? Right. That's where the bees and all those things come into play. You remember is it, is it, that story, Are we going to get the right? talk now? Is this, <laughs> yeah, is sit this down, talk? Brian. Um, so, also, the tree, I think, knows – how much fruit it should carry. Yeah. You know, and it drops it. Uh, in The flowers or the fruit? Uh, the fruit. So so you think the tree, after it's been pollinated, it's like, wait a minute, I've got a yeah, thousand way too pollinated much. You guys went here. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, got, I, we can only keep so many. Uh -huh. Well, it makes sense because it, it knows how much it can sustain. So you think even some pollinated flowers drop? So not all the flowers that right. drop are unpollinated. Right. Okay. I didn't, I didn't yeah. know. I thought... I thought the flowers that dropped were were ones that got missed, were never pollinated. Well, I don't hear the term out here so much, but I remember back in Michigan they would talk about June drop. Yeah, okay, uh, sure. Uh, on fruit. Okay. And uh, the tree would be loaded with fruit, then a bunch of it would drop. And it, it was a normal process just called June drop. The tree's eliminating fruit that it can't really support. Okay. So, in, in so the, a lot of de it depends on the nutrients available to the plant and the soil, the, the amount age. of moisture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like you going on a on a, a hike with a backpack and realizing, I got to drop some of this stuff. I'll, I'll never make my destination. So you empty your backpack. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, that's, right. that's good. That's how the searchers can find you too if you <laughs> exactly. leave things behind. And you came this way. Hey, Gina wants to know if there are any any uh, good online vendors for fruit trees. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, well, for Gina, 
who lives in Idaho, uh, Stark Brothers, yeah. is probably one of the best. And um, our friend that joins the show. Uh, Dave Wilson Nursery? No. But, I mean, he works for Tomorrow's Virgil. Harvest. You're thinking of Virgil? Well, it's Virgil, but it, for, for, the, for, the, for the general public, uh-huh. it's Tomorrow's Harvest. Right. Right. Um, Ed Livo. Ed yeah. Livo, right. Yeah. So, okay. because if you type in virtual, it's going to take you to some like wholesale grower right. nursery. But they do sell um, a wide variety of fruit trees via Tomorrow's Harvest. Stark Brothers. Yeah. Um, Dave Wilson. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I was going to mention um, you were talking about flowers on a tree. Yeah. And usually, uh, fruit trees have showy flowers, right? Very pretty. There's one that uh, the red barren peach Ooh, that can that be sold cool. just as a flowering tree because it's so pretty. But then the fruit is delicious, right? Yeah, if you get a peach from it, great. But we're we're talking a a red like Brian's sweatshirt, right. red, just really vibrant, vibrant red, super vibrant, double flowers too, yeah. double red flowers and big flowers too. Yeah, um, that. That is a really showy. And I mean, I mean, everybody talks about the cherry blossoms, the cherry blossoms, the pink and the white, and that is beautiful. But um, there are the the peaches have some really neat flowering um, varieties out there, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Did you see Joyce's question? No. Uh, please give me some tips for growing fruit trees in containers, feeding, Ooh. watering, etc. Joyce. 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 Yeah. Well, you are a lucky person because. The industry is kind of moving more towards this dwarf style of growing things. So a lot of places have started to release container trees, you know, nectarines, apples, peaches, plums that are designed for containers. Um, I would say minimum half whiskey barrel, no matter what you're doing. Yeah, if you've got something that size, you don't have to worry about yeah. transplanting it. So you know, And it depends where Joyce lives, too, is... She in a warm climate. Yeah, Joyce, mm-hmm. where, whereabouts are you? The reason yeah. I ask is there's some great apple trees called colonnade uh, varieties, which are um, just pillars. The, the tree doesn't get any wider than maybe a, a foot, 18 inches, and grows in a column straight up. Yeah. And it's kind of cool to see the, the apples hanging there. Self-supporting. Can, yeah, San just Fernando Valley. Is where she's located. Yeah. So very, very hot in the summertime, obviously. Yeah. The, it's not the summer heat we're worried about. It's more the winter, winter cold. And, and, yeah. and again, very, very cold as well. Yeah. Extreme temps in San Fernando Valley. So the, those apples would be good. And then y- y- there's also the berries. Yeah. You know, it used to be that uh, berries were rambling, suckering. I guess that's where the briar patches came from, right? Yep. Yep. Right. But now they've got things like uh, raspberry shortcake. Yeah, what's which the, is what's the company Bushel and Berries that came out with a line? Yeah, I think patio so. Berries. Yeah, um, you thought it was Bushel and a Peck, didn't you? <laughs> blackberries too. Yeah. There's Bushel blackberries. Yeah, and, and and I mean, and then there's also the citrus. You know, we all have the, um, you know, the oranges, lemons, limes, um, mandarins that can do great in containers. By the way, as well. when Craig Madden was here a couple of weeks ago, yeah, that and he that blue, uh, grapefruit orange blue. blue Plue? No. No, he but he he brought right. us some fruit, but he gave yeah. me. Did he give you one too? Yeah, it was that big plue. It was a grape, pomelo. P- pomelo. The, the I wasn't fruit, here, but yes. the grapefruit yeah. orange. Yes. Wow, you get the grapefruit taste, but that sweetness of the orange. Yeah, the underlying sweetness. I want a bunch of those. I almost those lost. Great. He gave us that avocado too, and I almost lost it because I, it, it would you know it's a classic avocado. I went out one day and I was like, ah, no, it's still. It still needs a, a minute. It's still, need, literally a minute. The next day I went out there and it was like almost I put my hand. We lost squishing, one. Squishing, squishing through it. I almost put my hand going through. I'm like, oh, I better eat it now. We lost one, but we saved the other. Yeah. Same thing happened. Uh, please repeat the pillar apple name. Ooh, for Lenore. John, John's got that. But um, you know, in terms of containerized fruit trees, okay. Here's the other thing that people have to really consider. No matter what container they put it in. So like I said, half half whiskey barrel is the size you want minimum okay. just to give it an, a good foundation with roots and soil and nutrients and all of that. Drainage is very important too, though. That has to have right. good drainage sure. because if those trees um, sit in water, 
they will all rot out real quick. We're going to take a break. All right. Stay, and then we get back. Yeah, we'll stay with the that. Apple and then question. John will answer that question again. Okay, it is a break time here for our friends on Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. Good morning. It is Garden America, Brian Maine, Tiger Palafox, and John Bagnasco. Back after these messages. How many times do we say that? Several times for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Stay with us. Back with your friends on Garden America. Hope you enjoyed that break. We are talking uh, fruit trees. Uh, a lot of different uh, subject matters today or subject matter. Yeah, Correct we were English there. still trying to finish um, the question about growing trees in containers, right. dwarf trees. Do you have that apple name? Well, there's different varieties. Uh, they're referred to as generally as columnar apples. But colonnade is one. If you go to Stark Brothers uh, that we were mentioning and look up columnar apples, I think they have four or five varieties that are available right now. Okay. So okay. columnar apples. But I, I wanted to touch on because, yeah, finish the, up again, tiger. whether you're talking about a stone fruit or citrus or berry, drainage in the container for these are very important. Now, what kind of soil, though? Well, I was going to say... Not I the feel, kind I use. No. <laughs> right. I was going to say you want a very basic soil to me. I feel like you should fertilize with fertilizers for these citrus and fruit trees and stuff that you have regularly anyways because they should be fertilized. So don't don't use some, you know, ocean forest, deep soil, uh, 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 heavy retaining soil. Use a very porous, almost like a cit cactus mix that allows for drainage and then fertilize accordingly um, because I feel like you can make a bigger mistake overwatering than underwatering once the tree is established. You Even that, that, in the San Fernando Valley? I think so. I think so. It depends, I guess, on how often you go on vacation. <laughs> if you're home too. all the time. So you're yeah. saying the ocean forest, a little more difficult Drainage. Because it, it holds water. Yeah, it does. It, okay. You know, and don't buy those right. fertilizers that say... No, ocean hold, forest doesn't hold water. I think it holds more than Happy Frog. Really? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I think Happy Frog is better draining. My own opinion, you could be Well, you're a Happy Frog guy, John, right? You could be 100% John, right. John's but... a Happy Frog guy because... That That's extra four dollars a bag or whatever right. it is for ocean forest is, is is a little bit past his budget. Well, it's a smaller bag too, <laughs> so it not only costs more, it's smaller. I, yeah. like, I like contented toad. That that <laughs> that's a good soil. It drains uh, drains well. Yeah, but neither one of those, uh, to me, holds water. Yeah, and like your statement, Tiger, <laughs> just doesn't hold water. <laughs> yeah. No, you could be right, but uh, the reason I use those is because I overwater everything. Yeah. And they drain, they drain well for me. And but I, I was thinking, uh, what's what's the name of the Miracle Grow type soils? Right. Those that, ones that have active ingredients that are designed right, to hold water. Right. Good. Yeah. That's probably what you would not want to use. But the, if I was growing a fruit tree in a container, I would just use osmocote. You just put it on the beginning oh, of yeah. the year and you're done. But but then the other thing, too, I like about more of a, a cactus mix because they're usually heavier because they have sand. And I like that weight in the for, for a, a tree. You know, sometimes those potting soils can be very lightweight. Yeah. And, and for a tree, that's a challenge, too, because you need some weight during the wind and, and just for stability of the plant. So, barrels probably aren't gonna what barrels aren't gonna blow over no but if you put it in a terracotta pot i've seen some right people oh have yeah some, even plastic big huge they plastic will take pots. those right. things right over sometimes and if it's not heavy enough then yeah you got a problem but um you know it might be good the best way to do it would be to use uh a, a soil like happy frog or ocean, ocean mm -hmm. forest and then put a mulch over the top oh there you go and, and if you want even more stability, um, uh, maybe mixed pumice. 
Because that would really help with your drainage. And but pumice is heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. It's, it's not like a perlite or, you know, it, it's almost like a rock. Yeah. Um, Lenore wanted you to know that she's got two lime trees, and she's had them for years in containers, and they seem happy. With happy frogs? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't well, know I'm not saying they can't. I'm, I'm not saying they don't do well. I'm just saying this is how I would plant it in cactus mix and in it, a whiskey barrel. Citrus, if you're going to grow citrus in containers, the if you could find true dwarf citrus mm -hmm. um, that's on flying dragon rootstock, that would be the absolute best because you could you could grow one indefinitely in a whiskey barrel. Yeah. I mean, it would be there after you passed away. Mm. And, and it would produce like crazy. Yeah, but it, I don't know anyone that sells them anymore, do you? No. You'd have to find it kind of online, and then if you're in California, good luck getting it shipped to you. Yeah, that's Especially true. if you're in Rancho Bernardo. <laughs> oh, yeah. What just happened there? They're quarantined. Yeah. They're, that, what was it? It was a breakout of... Uh, <laughs> what, yeah. what, what was it? What was that movie, The Outbreak? It was a breakout of E. coli or whatever. Um, no, they have the... John said it best. Wong... Wong Wei Beetle? What was it? <laughs> Wong Long Bang. Wong Long Bang. Wong Long Bang. Long bang. Yeah. Right. Wong Long Bang it's bug. It's the citrus. Carries... Well, it's not the bug. No, that's. Yeah. That's the disease. It's the, disease. it's the citrus greening disease. Right. And the fruit never ripens. It begins to and then just goes green. Which would be a pretty bad thing for California. Right. <laughs> Which is carried by the Asian psyllid. Yeah. And. Um, and it's something that they don't want to get established here in California because it would wipe out the whole industry. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, aside from, you know, it, it's happened. That kind of thing has happened in Florida. I remember reading when I was looking at that article regarding it, they talked about how it happened in Florida before and what it did to the area. Right. And it didn't just, you know, kind of like wipe out the industry in the area, but the whole ecosystem that went along with it. So damaged. somebody must have caught this pretty fast. They saw well, they, it and they, and they knew what it is, was. This has been happening actually here in California for many, many years already. Maybe in terms of, fifteen to twenty years. Yeah, that they're trying to keep it corralled. Wow. And every time they see the certain number of uh, infected uh, trees, infected trees, they instantly quarantine an area, which means that nothing comes out of there and nothing goes, you know, you know, in. And so, yeah. What is that quarantine process like? What What do they do? What so like, for example, if there's a farm, a citrus farm in that area, mm -hmm. they can no longer ship their product out of the area. Okay. 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 A nursery could no longer ship their plants out of the area as well. Um, Everybody in the house has to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah. They have to wear a mask in their cars while yeah. driving. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, just while and, picking fruit. And, I mean, one of the things that they combat it, and this is the funny, not not the funny, but people always talk about organic, right? They, they want organic. And citrus trees in California, they, they can't be organic because part of the whole process in growing citrus is they have to treat them. And I think it's with an imidacloprid, a systemic insecticide, before they can ship them anywhere. Like any, any citrus tree nursery has to treat their trees to ensure that they don't have bugs on them to ship them anywhere in California. So every citrus that you buy has been treated, I think, with an imidacloprid in California. And they have a tag that says it was treated, when it was treated, and all that. Um, I remember when it really happened, and, and it might have been 10, 15 years ago, at the nursery, we had to throw away all the citrus that were on our sales floor. Wow. Because they hadn't been treated yet. You know, this was before the time that they made these rules. And then, um, so we had to throw away every citrus that we had, and then we had to bring in new ones that had been treated already. John, what's your theory on organic bananas? <laughs> versus <laughs> versus just a regular banana. Oh, you mean would I buy an organic banana at right. the store? No, because they're more expensive than the others. And And what is the difference between an organic banana versus just a regular banana? Well, the organics supposedly are not treated with harsh pesticides, right. but the pesticides only affect the peel, right? That was my point. And if you're exactly. gonna if you're gonna peel, unless you eat the peel, yeah, uh, you're throwing that away. So right. the fruit should be fine. Yeah. So, just something to be, you know, buyer beware. Just look 
look into yeah. things a little like, bit more I when mean, you see something. I mean, what you're comparing is, you know, a banana to an apple in the sense of the apple, you're eating the whole thing. Sure. Right? Right. So if there's pesticides on that apple, right. then, yeah, you wouldn't want to be eating that, right? right? But a banana, you're peeling it and then eating the inside, so it doesn't really mm-hmm. matter yeah. in terms of what I think about that with. every time I go to Trader Joe's. Do you remember uh, Sharon Asakawa wrote an article about, uh, well, and we talked about it on the radio show, and she called it the Dirty Dozen. And she said, here's the the dozen uh, fruits and vegetables you might want to consider buying organically yeah. because they're the ones that are going to be most effective mm-hmm. by sprays. Right, or most affected, yeah. Right. right. I think strawberries top on the list, right? Yeah, strawberries was there, lettuce. Yep. You know, because if lettuce is being sprayed, I mean, you're, you're eating, eating that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think celery was up there. Really? And um, I can't remember that list, but if you Google it, You'll find, you know, if you do want to buy organic things, those are the ones maybe you should consider. We're going to take a break. Um, One more segment in terms of our friends on BizTalk Radio. One more segment for hour number one. You'll have news coming up top of the hour. The rest of us on Facebook Live are going to keep cruising through today's show, as we always do. Keep those questions, comments coming on Facebook Live. Get to as many, if not all of them, this morning before the show's over. In the meantime, it is break time for BizTalk Radio. Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox here on Garden America. Happy weekend to you. We are back, and again on Biz Talk Radio, last segment for our number one. News coming up top of the hour. Hour two kicks off at six minutes after, if your market does carry us. Uh, interesting uh, from Carla this morning. Or, yeah, Carla's saying that uh, they can't sell citrus in Huntington Beach, or at least oranges. Yeah. And that could be possibly what we've been referring to. Yeah, right. maybe they're under quarantine right. for their area as well. She also list, said that she carried the Dirty Dozen list in her yeah. wallet for a long time. That's oh, a yeah. great, that's a great a movie, isn't it? when she's at the grocery store. Dirty Dozen. Dirty Dozen. Yeah. 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 That, wasn't that remade? I think I so. I don't think so. Yeah. I, really? I don't think so. had a huge cast in it. Yeah. Everybody was in that movie. Yul Brenner, right? You're thinking of Magnificent Seven. Oh, Magnificent Seven, right. Yeah. Dirty, Dirty Dozen, Dozen was that... like Telly Savalas and Clint Eastwood. And, right. Uh, 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 Oh my God! Five more guys than Magnificent Seven. Um, who, <laughs> who was the guy? Uh, the Palimony guy, the Pal- Lee, Mar- Lee Marvin. Oh, Lee Mar. I think Lee Marvin's in that right. movie. Good movie. So who's um, who of everybody? There was another question that I you had when we were talking about container citrus. Um, we we dealt with drainage, right? Talked about drainage. Yeah. What was the other question? I feel like you you said it, and then I thought we skipped over it, but. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at them. What was it? Uh, the name for John to to give the name again? No, we got the apple colonnade name, or right? whatever. The, yeah, uh-huh. are we all caught up? Yeah, colonnade. All right, you've got this perplexed look on your face. Well, because I'm trying to retrace my thinking and Tiger's thinking. If we miss something, I'll right. see. If we missed your question, just post it again. We'll get to it. Uh, Kevin says that he had a lot of aphids on his orange tree in Poway with ants and spiders all over the place. So he just used a power washer, and it helped a lot. But he brings up a good point. If you see ants on your fruit trees, Ooh, you've got moving... bugs. There's no ants going into a fruit tree without an insect infestation. Right. Yeah, there's a reason the, why they're there. They cause it. <laughs> right? So yeah. um, usually what I do in a situation like that is I just get some taro ant dust and sprinkle it because it'll stick to the trunk and if it doesn't get washed away it'll last for like eight months it stops the ants from going up into the tree and then spreading the insects around stops them in their tracks is what it does oh it does (laughs) and with aphids uh they'll disappear right away but if there's other things like uh scale um or mites that were there uh those you'll probably still have to spray but at least you'll have a fighting chance when you spray because the ants aren't still going up. Uh, it was Kevin's question where he said that he found that oh, yes, persimmons yes. in Fallbrook attracted coyotes. Uh, coyotes, which we were talking about, and I, I don't remember, but um, 
Yeah, it's interesting that if the persimmons actually attracted the coyotes, like coyotes prefer persimmons over other fruit. But are you was, wondering if they were eating the rats that were that eating were, the persimmons? That were eating, because right? I mean, let's be real: who's eating persimmons? And so they're just falling on the ground, <laughs> attracting <laughs> other other critters to the area. I love persimmons. <laughs> Who you? I, I'm not so big on hachia because they're mushy, right? <laughs> yeah. No, persimmons are actually very tasty. Yeah, but I was the food is just like a sweet apple. Um, but uh, Rick had a good question asking about the dwarf fruit trees as well. And are dwarf fruit trees the same as regular fruits? Um, but just just smaller trees, just smaller trees. And I would say that is very true for a lot of them. So meaning, you know, when you look at a uh, Washington naval orange, uh, a a semi dwarf Washington navel orange is just mm-hmm. yeah a smaller version of the standard Washington navel. You get the same fruit, um, but it's just a smaller tree. By the way, the the uh, there's one nursery that puts out citrus, and mm-hmm. they're called True Dwarf Citrus. Right. They're not True Dwarf. <laughs> they're semi dwarfs. Yeah. Uh, the True Dwarf we're talking about has to be on Flying Dragon rootstock. So, and True Dwarf just means that it's going to be. Uh, two thirds the size of a regular tree, which That's, is like okay, you took a fifteen foot down tree to ten, or a thirty foot to twenty, <laughs> yeah. which is often the case in citrus. By the way, if you look up um, coyotes and persimmons online, <laughs> it says uh, I love that. that. That's your Google. Yeah, coyotes. Coyotes don't just wait for the persimmons to be at their ripest and brightest color. But as soon as they're available, they just, they eat, just them. eat them. Yeah, they'll really? eat them when they're astringent. Oh, wow. That wow. that's why a lot of people don't like hachias because a fuyu you can bite into like an apple. Uh-huh. But if a hachia is not ripe, it's astringent and your mouth just puckers up Oof. like ten times worse than a lemon. Yeah. Um, so those you have to wait until they're mushy before you eat them. Okay. Um, but then there are some dwarf fruit that are. Are different, um, you know. As an example, the little cotto or Mexican avocado. Um, that fruit is usually a little smaller, to some degree, than a standard avocado. Um, and then, um, what else am I trying to think? What's of What's the other name for little cotto? It's not Mexicola. No, that's lime. Zutano. No. Uh, I thought it was Wurtz. Wurtz. That's yeah, right. W U R T Z. Yeah, yeah. Wurtz. little little cotto is a trademark name. Correct. And then Wurtz is the variety that it actually poquito is. Poquito avocado. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> poquito. avocado poquito. Right. Avocado poquito. Um, I'm trying to think. There's another real popular fruit that is um, different for the um, dwarf. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but so there are some varieties of fruit. That are, are a little bit different. When avocado they're... you were thinking of? No, no, oh. just other fruits. Oh, okay. I can't remember what it was. Because holiday's another dwarf avocado. Oh, yeah, that is. Holiday is another dwarf yeah. one, right? Kind of um, a weeping one, which is nice because avocados are huge trees. But if you got one that kind of weeps over, you can just walk up and pick the fruit. That's a good one for a container, too. Yeah. Well, those are heavy cottos. <laughs> that and um, uh, Don Galagli, if you can find <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, good luck finding that one. That's a good one, though. It is. But I remember now. Came from La Jolla. Blueberries. Did you know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Blueberries, a lot Don of times, Diego. the compact ones in pots aren't usually as big, but they have some new varieties of blueberries that actually have larger berry. But usually when you had a um, a, a containerized blueberry, it was a smaller berry. Yeah. And you had, what, what's the high bush? The high bush. Southern, Southern high, high bush, bush varieties right. were the bigger berry, right. but it was a bigger plant. So right. That's what I was thinking of, blueberries. But one of the new Southern high bush, the, those are the ones that do best in warm climates. Yeah. Uh, a new one called Emerald is more compact and probably the biggest blueberries right. that you can find. But that's kind of new to, right. to the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, it is uh, break time. Uh, this is going to do it for our number one. If you're tuned in on Biz Talk Radio with news coming up, we come back at six minutes after. Uh, the rest of us on uh, Facebook Live, a lot of good questions and comments. Keep those coming. We are going to take a break back even quicker for those on Facebook Live, just a bit longer on Biz Talk Radio. Thank you for tuning in each and every week. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is Garden America. I'm Brian Maine, John Begnesco, Tiger Palafox. 
back after the news and uh, these messages on BizTalk Radio. Stay with us. Okay, we have returned. If you're tuned in on BizTalk Radio, thank you for being with us today. Those on Facebook Live, lots of questions, lots of comments. This is our number two, so let's keep uh, the old, old train moving down the tracks. Got a good question here from Rick. He wants to know if dwarf fruit tree varieties are the same as the regular fruit tree, just in smaller trees. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Right, and right. it's because of the rootstock they put them on. They put them on a dwarfing rootstock, Rick, so... Yeah. If you had a uh, nectarine, trying to think of a variety of something though. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. But there's a lot of, especially stone fruits. There's a lot of varieties of like nectarine, apple, plum, right. that are all Santa Rosa, uh, red berry, and, right. and they just put it on a dwarf stock. They have there's a dwarf uh, root stock for apples that keeps the trees about four feet tall. Yeah. Yeah, but and, yeah. it's a hard one to grow, so you don't usually see apples on that rootstock. And then uh, Carla mentions that the hachia persimmons one of the best for making uh, cookies, persimmon cookies, and persimmon bread. I don't think I've ever had a persimmon cookie. Really? I don't think Sharon I either. I don't remember. Oh yes, you have. <laughs> Wait, did remember you Sharon? Them for no, me? Sharon used to make them and bring them in. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, persimmon cookie. Huh? I'd like to taste one again, though, based on all this. Well, information I don't know if Sharon's listening, but yeah. you know. received this morning, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, John, oh yeah. By the way, John wants me to let everyone know that we do accept baked goods. Yeah. If we know who you are, <laughs> just not <laughs> random. One thing at radio stations throughout the years, you know, listeners would send in food. Oh it's yeah, like, sure. It's like. You don't know where that came from. My my wife, who's a teacher, used to teach fourth grade in La Mesa. And every year, they would do an appreciation week, okay? And during that week, they would go and bring donuts or cookies or snacks to places in the community. And they would go to the fire department. The fire right. department opens the sure. door. Thanks. Come on in. Love it. They're all eating it right then and there. Police department? Nope. No, we do not take food. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, even I, from a fourth grade class? Yeah. No, because we don't know where it came from yeah, or who ex- did it. Or, exactly. It's like, it's such a different oh, thing. Oh, well, you've got <laughs> first graders coming in and shooting their teachers. Yeah, you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, anyways, yeah, very different dynamics on people who take food. Lifeguards, when I was lifeguarding on the beach, we were actually instructed don't ever say no to food, even if you're not hungry. Because they were worried that then just people would stop offering food. <laughs> <laughs> so they would say, take the, food, take the food, bring it back to the headquarters or whatever, right. leave it for anybody else. But don't ever say no. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Hmm. How about Sue's question, John? I was just going to mention that Kevin says oh, yeah. it's uh, uh, snowing in Coeur d'Alene, which is the north north part of Idaho, right? Yeah, that's way up there. Is that yeah. snow in states? Stick then up there. Oh yeah, because oh, you're yeah, saying, yeah. you say you say by Gina, it snow may snow, but never. Yeah, snow, she's kind of in the banana belt of Idaho. Okay, and uh, where, what town is that? Uh, well, she's Mer- just west of. She's in Meridian, just west of Boise. Okay. And it is pronounced Boise. Boise. Yeah. So, Everyone else says Boise. Boise, is, Idaho. What is kind of lazy? It's Boise. You pronounce Boise. The S. Yeah, yeah, Boise. Oh, okay. A lot of people don't pronounce the S. It's Boise. Yeah. They tried other names. They tried Boy B, right. Boy E, mm-hmm. Boy D, and, and boy, ended up with Boy C. Boy, yeah, yeah, Boy C. Boy A was just weird. Can Sue use Osmoco to grow more citrus and avocado on her peach trees? What was that? Can she use Osmoco to oh, grow yeah. more citrus and avocado? I mean, avocados, I mean, Osmoco is a great fertilizer, 
So NPK, nitrogen phosphorus potash. Well, John loves it. He's an right. endorser. No, it's a great product for those basic three. But I will say the one thing you have to worry about with any fruiting is that they need other micronutrients to help with the fruit, with production, calcium, and all of that. And we've talked about the product before, the Citrus Growers Blend from Grow More. Right. Is they also, a, there is an Osmocote that has all the minor nutrients. Oh, does it? In it. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I buy it in 50-pound bags oh. off Amazon for $170 does a it, bag or something. Does it have a special like name, Osmocote Plus or Osmocote? I think it's uh, Osmocote Plus Minor Nutrients. And it's, <laughs> they get real creative. Plus it, Minor Nutrients. It <laughs> feeds for nine months. Okay. Yeah. So, no, I mean, that that's the one thing you... That, that is the one thing with citrus or, or fruit trees or berries or anything producing is that it they don't just survive off of NPK alone. Right. You need to supplement it. And if it's in a pot, the only way it's going to get those minonutrients or calcium and all that is if you give it to it um, because obviously it doesn't have the soil to tap into. When, when would be a good time in San Diego or places that, that share our weather to start feeding citrus? March with citrus foods. Yeah, I would say March. Okay. Yeah, you're free of the last frost, starting to warm up. Yeah, March. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to encourage too much growth, like we've talked about before. Then, because that's what affects. Uh, right. That's what gets affected by the frost the most. You don't want your your stone fruits, you know, your deciduous fruiting um, trees, to come out too early. And if you encourage that, you know. Oh, you, if you're in a cold area. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like right. for yeah. you know San for Diego us, or, you right. know. Yeah, so ours are all climate. flowering now. Like peaches are right. starting to flower and nectarines. Uh, plums are a little bit lighter, but they'll be yeah. starting up. You should see the buds swelling. But, um, yeah, so if and, and you can just use that as a general rule for wherever you're located is after your, your, your last, last frost. frost is when you can start fertilizing sure. the things. So that way you um, you don't encourage growth before that. Um you know, and then obviously, if you're in areas that get frost all the way up until May, you don't get to grow citrus. So. <laughs> We've mentioned this before, but if you want to know when your last frost date is, you can uh, just Google last frost date uh, Dave's Garden, mm -hmm. and you come up with a chart where you just put in your zip code, and it'll tell you when the last frost date Dave's is. Dave's Garden? Dave's Garden. Oh, great. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard about this new cherry plum Interspecific inter hybrid. I think when we had Ed on uh, before, I think he mentioned it, right? He did. I I, I planted one. Um, well, actually, my son planted it, and it should be. Uh, I don't know if it'll fruit this year or not, but it may. Uh, the nice thing about it is that in areas where you can't grow cherries or cherries don't do real well, this is a cherry cross with a plum and uh, does really well in most areas of so Southern California. it doesn't California. need the real cool temperatures? No. But you do get really cool fruit. <laughs> <laughs> the, cool fruit without the cool temperatures. Yeah, and the yeah, nice thing about sweeter. it— sweeter. The flavor is supposed to be more of the cherry-esque, oh, yeah. and the fruit is a little smaller. Yeah, and it's uh, but it's not tart. Like Tiger says, right. it's sweet, and it's a freestone— and um, a nice thing about it is it holds on the tree for almost a month. Mm. So sometimes, like plums, I mean, when they're ripe, you've got yeah. 500 plums ready to eat on one day. Right. We should get Dave back on as we get into the spring. Yeah, Dave? Ed. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, what did I say, Dave? Dave, yeah. Dave Wilson. Dave Wilson, Ed Lovell. Marshall Nushri. Right. right. Tomorrow's Harvest, Ed Lovell. What about <laughs> figs? What about figs? You know, figs are... Uh, we used to grow uh, fig trees. Uh, my grandmother had one when we lived in Detroit. And, and she also had a persimmon tree. Oh, Detroit persimmon? Detroit, yeah, right? right? And so what, she would, what they would do on the uh, fig tree every year is in the fall, after we had a freeze and it lost all its leaves or a frost, they would dig a trench right next to the tree uh, line it with uh, straw, and then wrap the tree in burlap and lay it down in the hole and then bury it. Wow. And then in the spring, they'd pull it back up. Same thing. Let's see. I, the persimmon, I think they built a, 
a, a wood structure around and pack that with straw and burlap. Wow. But that's the way they could keep these things because they're, they're not hardy in those zones. Yeah. So a lot of people in cold areas try to grow figs that way. And now there's some varieties like Chicago hardy, which are supposed to live through the winters in places like Chicago. But there was one that I wanted to mention that I bought last year from. It was a Dave Wilson tree, and um, it's called Panache. Uh huh. Are, are you familiar with that one? It yeah. has a, a striped fruit, and it's really sweet. I really like it. I've got one at home, Brian which I've got to put in the ground pretty soon. Okay, we're going to take a break as we continue with the Garden America show. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to go to our website, GardenAmerica.com. Check it out. Links to all of our shows, previous shows, as we mentioned earlier, so on and so forth. So, right. uh, and when we come back, I'm going to tell you about a fig you can grow in a container. Wow, how's that for a tease? Yeah. That's on the other side after we take a break for our friends on BizTalk Radio. Garden America continues. Uh, Those on BizTalk Radio, we appreciate you tuning in. Those on Facebook Live, thank you each and every week. GardenAmerica.com, the link is right there on our Facebook page with our webmaster, Daniel Travers, monitoring us to make sure that we don't say anything that's not true and to keep us in line. He's there watching and listening. And, you know, John was talking about fruit trees that, you know, you grow in cold regions that maybe, you know, wouldn't really grow in cold regions. And we were talking about containers, and obviously if you can put a fruit tree in a container, it makes it very easy for you to move it into your garage, or if you're very uh, affluent, you could put it in your orangery um, (laughs) over the winter. Um, So, yeah, I mean, you know, it works hand-in-hand. If you have uh, varieties that you can keep in container, you could grow them in Detroit or Chicago as long as you move that container somewhere over the winter. I knew some uh, people in... Ontario, Canada, that had a citrus grove. A, and like a grove? Well, they oh. probably had about a dozen fruit trees. Okay. Uh, different types of trees, full size, and they planted them in the ground and then just built a greenhouse over them. Over the whole, over the whole grove. And, and he was telling me that he figured that each orange cost him about <laughs> 30 bucks. <Wow. laughs> Yeah. But they were fresh. Yeah. Anyway, this I was telling you uh, about this fig tree for a container. Right, right. Violette de Bordeaux. Ooh. It's a Violette de Bordeaux. <laughs> Violette de Bordeaux. Does there that you mean go. violin of Bordeaux? Does that mean purple of Bordeaux? I think it means the violet purple color. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, or you can eat the fruit with a glass of Bordeaux. <laughs> or with a, yeah. I, I planted fig, fig nominal last year in my yard. I don't know about fig nominal. You've got me intrigued. Yeah. So it's a dwarf. How is it fig. doing? So I completely stressed it out because I planted it in the ground. That's one way to keep it dwarf. In, in the in the late summer, and I just didn't water it because just to give people a little bit of insight about figs in, in nurseries, we will bring in apples, nectarines, apricots, plums, figs. Bare root. All the other ones, you can water them when they're bare root, and they'll start to grow, and everything will be fine. Figs, you cannot water in a nursery until it starts to leaf out. If you water before it leaves out in a nursery when it comes in bare root, I think we had almost a 80% loss because of root rot on those ones. So I was I was scared to overwater it, and so I just didn't water it. But it's it's actually doing fine now. It's coming back this year. But how many people would know that you have to wait till it leaves out? I don't. We you right? know yeah, it's tough. So well, it's probably one of the most difficult trees to plant bare root. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I agree with you because all these other fruit trees, it's it's almost seems yeah. like they're like oh whatever, water no water, we're fine we'll without you. I mean, Figs, oh. They're so fickle. And we'll even put it in a cactus mix compared to the other 
fruit trees where we'll just do for an actually potting soil. Right. And again, if you water that, it, it, and sometimes we run into problems because it rains, and, and there's nothing you can do then. Well, you, you, you know, think and that the rain would be a little different it, than you than would think, but our these water. figs are so fickle. So, all right. So this phenomenal fig you're talking yeah, about, yeah, uh, I mean, is me. available right now from Logie's Greenhouse. Okay, in a four-inch pot. Oh, that's cool. For twenty-two ninety-five. Wow. If you don't live anywhere near Mission Hills Nursery, because yeah. that's where you should go, right? Yeah, and, and you get, can a get nice like a five-gallon five gallon for yeah. twenty-four bucks. Yeah. But it, it says that um, it fruits year-round. No, I, maybe I stressed out. <laughs> Yeah, as, so, as long as you water it while it's growing, it yeah. says. So, but the um, uh, it said that the it doesn't go dormant. Well, year round probably means while it's okay. growing. Okay, but it only gets to be twenty eight inches tall. Yeah, that's it's, that's small. Yeah, for I'm, a fig. I'll, I'll, when I go home, I'll take a picture and I'll post it. So yeah, maybe you thought right now. you weren't taking care of it, but it's just a really small. No, no, tree. no, no. I stressed it. Oh, okay. it. It showed there were there were there was leaf loss and yellowing that were occurring, that told me you needed to water me and you're not. So, so but, here's what you're gonna get. But again, kind of like the rosemary, it's in a part of the yard that stays wet, so I was a little bit worried to overwater it. So yeah, do post that on our Facebook page. I will. People are probably very curious right now because yeah, I, re- I I like figs. Oh, I do fruit, too. So, and you can't. And figs, but I didn't want a big giant fig tree. That's something you can't really get in the supermarket. No, because they don't ship well. No, yeah. no. Fig Newtons ship well. Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> those, you were always a big, those elves have it all figured out <laughs> in shipping figs. You were a big fan of the big fig Newton. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Oh, so yeah, figs. Um, are, I, I like the dwarf because it, in, and there's no unless you yeah. are a creator of fig newtons, there is no reason for you to have a full size fig tree. They produce so much fruit. Well, not not like uh, Black Mission, right? No, Black That's Mission, a I mean, huge tree. You know, Black Jack, Black Mission, um, Black. You know what the selling turkey. point for Black Jack is? What or was? No, that it was the first dwarf. Fig tree. <laughs> it's not even really. Yeah, it's not even dwarf. And it, well, it's dwarf in the sense that it stops at twenty feet, <laughs> yeah. but it grows fast at twenty yeah. feet and that then the stops. Thing. But that's figs, not figs real. grow fast. Yeah, they do. Yeah, people will say, "Oh, I want this fig tree," and it'll be you, you know bare root again in a nursery. Bare root, five gallon apple comes up about five feet, branches off. You see some structure to the tree. A fig. Bare root five gallon is going to so be a stick, stick yeah. maybe sticking two feet out of the can. And people would be like, oh, what? What, what is this, that? Oh. What is that? I'm like, give it six months. It's going to be bigger than all of these apples here. You know, <laughs> they grow so fast. Something we almost never talk about is walnuts. Yeah. Because they're almost, wasn't that the nut that uh, that is almost. We were talking about diseased trees, and was walnut the one back east that there were whole areas that were taken out? No, those were chestnuts. Chestnuts. You're thinking oh. of the American chestnut. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Little Miss Figgy is a great dig, not full size, and lots of fruit. Ooh. Dig or fig? <laughs> dig. No, Little dig Miss or Figgy fig. is a great fig. Oh, she put Yeah, dig. Yeah. yeah. Maybe she digs it. There's also one called uh, Petite Negra. Oh, yeah? Uh, which is another little dwarf one. Nice. So those are great. But anyway, the reason I brought up walnuts is that in Southern California, where you have smaller lots, you usually don't see walnuts because they're big trees. Yeah. But there's a dwarf walnut called Pedro. If you could, of course, it seems uh, a little bit uh... <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> well, he... Why? Because his name's Pedro. His name's yeah. Pedro. <laughs> Wait, well, Pedro, why, a little dwarf Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro Ooh. is small. See. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, it's it's a harder one to find, but if you want a walnut, uh, that's a great one. It's a good variety. Speaking of the that's only, another tree it's hard to plant bare root. The only nut Dead and pecans. that we sell is the um, all-in-one almond. I don't think I've ever had the one. The rest though. of the nuts are behind the counter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Uh, for those on Big Talk Radio. Nuts. Mm. No, <laughs> not too common. 
All right, those on Facebook Live, keep the questions, comments coming. We're having a good time. Hope you are, too. Hope we're uh, all learning together this morning here on Garden America. So do stay with us. Those on BizTalk Radio, back after these messages. All right, we are back as uh, we cruise through this uh, Saturday morning together, maybe Saturday afternoon, or if you're listening to a previous show, could be any time of the could day be or Tuesday, night. Tuesday, Wednesday, could be two in the morning. Friday. Somebody goes to one of our podcasts at two <laughs> in the morning and wants to hear some gardening information. In fact, late at night is a good time because it's quiet. There's no distractions. Yeah, you you can just focus on the show. Yeah, focus on the show. We've got several platforms. So, you can, uh, Alexa is happy to say it. So John mentioned macadamia nuts, and if you are a fan of macadamia nuts, you would think, why not grow your own macadamia, macadamia nut tree? They're very expensive nuts to buy. Yeah. And, and a they tree do, do really well here in Southern California. Grows great. Yeah. Like, they just grow by themselves, really, little care. Well, okay, if that's the case, why do they all come from Hawaii? It seems like anytime somebody gives you macadamia nuts, it's yeah. from Hawaii. Wouldn't it be cheaper, California? It's a great question. <laughs> Um, you remember when we were little, Brian? And where's the closest farm, John? Macadamia nut farm? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a <laughs> macadamia nut grows in Southern California. Yeah. yeah. I just, again. But um, I was going to mention when you and I were kids, do you remember the color of pistachios? They were always red. Do you remember that? The shells were red because they came from Iran. And they dyed them red over there. Why? I have no idea. But um, I don't know if you know, we, we began during Carter's time having trouble with Iran. <laughs> I remember that time, yes. <laughs> yeah. So Speaking of peanut farmers, continue. Yeah, so we couldn't get uh, pistachios, so they started growing them here in California. And now all, almost all, virtually all our pistachios come from California. Which leads me back to the macadamia nut question. California macadamia nuts compared to Hawaii. Yeah. Because they, they're expensive. They do grow them. I'd have to look we and see. We need to look into this. Yeah. If anybody has any information, let us know. Um, but while we're mentioning pistachios, because occasionally we'll get a question about this. Right. Pistachios do not do well without chilling. So for uh, Northern California, the inland valleys... Uh, in northern and central California, that's good pistachio Perfect. country, uh, and you do need both male and female because here comes the talk again. <laughs> the male trees won't produce fruit, but neither will the females if there's not a male tree around. Have I mentioned the female hyena lately to you, John? <laughs> you know what? We don't have time now, but after the show, People if you want to talk up. about it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Carla wanted to know if I mentioned my fig tree suggestions. I oh. think I thought I did. I think yeah. in the course of conversation. Yeah, I mentioned panache. Mm -hmm. I, did we talk about Texas Giant? Mm -hmm. That's another no. good one just because big fruit. You talked about Petit Negra. You talked Phenomenal. And you mentioned another one. I wonder if anything that has Texas in the name of the fruit has got to be large, be right? Right. So yeah. large-sized fruit. Yeah. Well, that's just like any food that has California in the name has avocados. Right. I want, how come they have Texas Giants, but they don't have um, Rhode, uh, Rhode Island Dwarfs? Is, why? Is everything in Rhode Island small? Well, no, the state's small. The smallest yeah, state smaller in state, the... But I think they might have like a complex. They don't want to be... <laughs> what, is, what is the... Uh... The smallest state? Well, no. I used to, the dimensions of Rhode Island. Probably we the... We learned that in school. District of Columbia. Oh, there's another small... It's a the, district, though. Yeah, they want to be a state. <laughs> um, Lisa wants to know if pecan trees need male and female trees. They don't, but they do need pollinizers. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to buy a pecan tree, there are some varieties that are self-fruitful. So look for those. Otherwise, you'll have to get two different pecans in order to get fruit. Yes, yeah, so why I mentioned the all-in-one almond. It's a self-fertile almond tree. Right. Otherwise, I've never to... had uh, fresh almonds. Yeah, I'm, my, me neither. I don't I, think I, either. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, 
there are there are quite a few macadamia nut farms in California. I, you I looked searched. it up. Yeah, there's quite a few. And, and I we don't but so the only thing we don't I, see them though. Why? The only Why thing I can think of is is in terms of you know crops. Hawaii probably just has an abundance amount of water, and they could probably do really well production wise there. And, and so they've got a lot of humidity there too. Therefore, I wonder if that that's has anything why they to grow with it. it. Yeah, um, but I mean, you know, it's funny because Hawaii is transitioning. You know, they their their big thing used to be sugar as well, and they're taking CNH. out they're taking out a lot of sugar plantations now because they just find it's not it's not the best crop to grow for them. But and they're keeping so, all their Pineapples. Yeah, I think so. And macadamia nuts so far. But yeah, California macadamia nuts. Yeah. You need to look into that. But yeah, the macadamia nut tree grows easily here in California. And you would think that if, but the problem with harvesting a macadamia nut tree, unlike a apple, which you can just pick the fruit and harvest and eat um, macadamia have, nuts. Have, you can shake them and they all go into a big... Right? <laughs> what are you talking macadamia? No, or no, apples? I'm talking about apples and some of the, you know. Oh, how they harvest the right, trees? Right. Yeah, a lot of times they'll, you know, just shake a tree right. and whatnot. But, but um, the problem with macadamia nut is that there's a process to harvesting the nut. You know, it's not an easy. It, it's not just an easy. Oh, and you because then you got to peel it and you know you have to harv. I, I think you even might have to roast them to get the nut out. Can't remember. I don't know. That's but. A subject matter we don't often discuss here yeah. on Garden America. <laughs> but, yeah. Rick wants to know if uh, coffee plants are shrubs or trees. Ooh. Depends where you live. Tomato, tomato. Is it a fruit or a vegetable? <laughs> they, um, they're they actually trees, mm -hmm. but they stay small in size, so... You could say that they were small trees or large shrubs. Yeah, and a lot of times they keep them small because that makes it easier for production wise. So, and, and there's another uh, crop that was grown in Hawaii mm -hmm. that's now starting to be grown here in Southern California. Yeah, and they're losing space in Hawaii for it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's a singer that has. Uh, oh. Jason Mraz. Jason Mraz, Jason Mraz has yeah. a coffee, coffee plantation in Fallbrook. Yep. That was Wait, John. That was John. Say hi, John. That was John's first crop right. attempt that he right. was considering was a coffee plant plantation up there. Send you could have just, just been sitting on your back porch right now, mm -hmm. looking over your plantation. The first year that we were there, we bought a coffee plant, set it outside. <laughs> the tra my son was living on the property and living in a trailer while we were getting ready to build. And uh, we put that in a pot outdoors, and that was a cold winter because <laughs> 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 it was dead as a doornail, completely black from the stem to the leaves. Mm -hmm. and, and then we also found out that coffee does not like wind. So our you've been to our house, yeah. and there's wind. Uh, a nice breeze and no. that, that's uh, there all the time, and it's just not good for coffee. Yeah, you would have had to put in way too much infrastructure. I was going right. to say, very much your... controlled condition. Yeah. Well, over at the flower fields in uh, Carlsbad, California, they planted um, demonstration gardens. That's where all the ranunculus are grown, mm -hmm. the Tecolote ranunculus. And they put in dem demonstration gardens of different crops that we grow here in Southern California, and they put in a little coffee plantation. And after four or five years, they had zero coffee production, and the plants were growing a little, but just not doing well. So then they put up the big screens like you have for tennis, yeah, uh, around tennis right. courts, and you can go there now, and the plants just bear like crazy. But they had to screen out all the wind coming off the ocean. Yeah, and you know what was interesting? Now that I think about this, was coffee uh, fruit is really good it's sweet yeah uh and also loaded with caffeine <laughs> so <laughs> you get a bag of coffee if fruit, you get a right? bag of, of coffee berries um it's the same thing as drinking several cups of coffee so you have to watch you don't eat too many of those yep. the bean jittery. is what's inside the the, right. the the fruit the fruit's red it's kind of like a cherry yeah. Where you have the exterior soft, fleshy part, and it's actually tasty. And then they have the little seed in the middle, and that's the coffee that you roast and drink. 
Eileen wants you to wants us to have Sharon as a guest one day. Yeah, all right. Slide it right between you two. Well, I'm thinking I'm not going to be here uh, the first week in March because I'm going to be in Florida. And then you're going to Brussels. You're going to be gone. And I may be going to Brussels in June. Got to send John with a camera. Right, and then he can just do remote. So he, if you guys start from there. saving yeah. up money, maybe you can afford to have Sharon come in. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a break. We've got one more segment coming up uh, for both Facebook Live and uh, Biz Talk Radio. Do stay with us. Plenty of time for your questions, your comments, as we pause to take a break on Biz Talk Radio. All right, this is it, our final segment here on Garden America. If you're just joining us, you missed a lot of segments. We're toward the end of the show. But, hey, take every segment for what it's worth. You'll learn something this segment. We'll do our best. And, again, thank you for tuning in to Garden America. Um, I wanted to quickly mention, uh, um, I know I'm talking over you. No, No, go ahead. But um, we didn't mention peaches yet, but I think the hottest thing in peaches right now are the donut peaches. Oh, yeah. They're really good, and there's white donut peaches, too, mm-hmm. which are really good. Sat- they, they also call them Saturn something? Saturn, I think right? Saturn's a variety of, Is that, the, of donut the donut pe- yeah. peach, right? Yeah, so it's more of a squatty peach. Why is it it's squatty? Because they crossed it with a persimmon or something, right? Well, no? for sure it wasn't crossed with a persimmon, no. but I don't know why forget, they're forget squatty. why they were squatty. Yeah, I'll look it up. Oh. Um, but it along those lines, what I was going to say was just as a reminder for people that this is probably the last period of time if you and you're even maybe even a little bit late um, in Southern California or mild areas where you need to spray your fruit trees. So your um, fungicides, insecticides. Are you talking cool. about for per- peach leaf curl? Yeah, like just your dormant oil sprays right now. So. Yeah. Peach leaf curl, um, bugs, so the horticultural oil. Um, I mean, what do what do they do now? They don't do lime sulfur anymore, right? Is it copper? You know, or... I, I'm not really positive. The last information I had was that copper did nothing for peach leaf curl. Okay. Even though it's sold, but you'd have to check on that. Lime sulfur is 100% effective, but not sold in California. You might be able to get it on Amazon, though, yeah, right? <laughs> Everything else is available there. And then uh, jujubes are great trees for hot, dry areas. If you're in a, uh, also called Chinese date, the common name, it's a date-like fruit that you can eat fresh, and then you can also let them dry. And there's a lot of new varieties out there. There's one called sugar cane, um, one called uh, honey jar. So you might want to look at those because it's not practical to grow dates in uh, areas that are not desert areas. You know, dates come off uh, Phoenix dactylifera. Right, big date farms. Yeah, which are palm trees, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, have you ever seen them growing where they put the bag around them? Up in the tree. I think so. I was yeah, just to yeah. wonder how they got those bags. How do they get them those. up there? Yeah, but I guess they got to go up there to pick them, right? The donut peach is a descendant of the wild pantau peach from China. Oh, the pantau peach. Yeah, that one. <laughs> oh. so. on the tip of everyone's. Tongue. I thought it was a cross. I thought it was a cross, but I am wrong. It's just a different well, variety of peach. Well, if it's wild, it might be a different species too, right? Well, they well they said wild. Uh, it's still a peach, though. Right, but it peach. could be a different a species of peach. A peach, correct. It is a different species of peach, but it's still a peach. Right. I thought it was a cross between a different fruit and yeah. peach. Yeah. Yeah. Carla's got a question, John. She does. What is it? How do you sterilize home mixed seed starting mix? Putting it in my oven doesn't appeal to me. Also, what does damping off disease look like? Ooh, sterilizing a. I mean, mixed yeah. seed starting mix. I personally, I would not do it because 
it's a lot of work. And yeah. It's seat starting mix is not that expensive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean, Carla, you just missed out on a chance. You could ask your husband for Valentine's to get you a bag <laughs> of seat starting mix. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, do you have a birthday coming up or something? But yeah, I mean, the only way to sterilize a soil, I mean, without using a chemical, would be to just bake it, right? Yeah, you, you have know. to heat it, or you would you could solarize it outside, you yeah. know, with plastic and. It's just a mess, though. Yeah. The uh, you could uh, peat moss is sterile, right? Peat moss or quar, mm -hmm. you could just take that and mix it with perlite, and you'd have a sterile medium. Sterile mix, probably be more expensive than a bag of yeah. seed starting mix, though. Damping um, off disease looks like your little seedling comes up mm -hmm. and uh, looks great, and you go look at it the next day, and it's bent over dead. So the disease doesn't really look like it's not something that comes on it's like mildew like. and and uh, things that you can watch progress. It just goes from alive to dead in one day. And I mean, I would say that it does look like overwatering, but you well the same result. Yeah, you, there's nothing you can do where right. you know normally you if you're take the water back. if you're underwatering or overwatering, you can take a water take. You can water less or you can water more. But like what John says, people also think it's something – it happens so quick. Right. So by the time they see the problem, late, people go, yeah. oh, I'll just stop yeah. watering, and then it still dies. Because you can spray with Captan, and that will yeah. kill the disease. But, you know, here's another simple thing, Carla. Why don't you just plant your seeds yeah. and then uh, put a covering probably about, uh, let's say, a quarter inch of perlite over the top of that. And you won't have damping off because perlite is sterile. So the seedling coming up through the perlite will be just fine. Yeah. In order for damping off disease to attack the um, seedling, it happens right at ground level. And if that's covered with perlite, you don't have the problem. I'm sorry, vermiculite. 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 Perlite. Perlite would work too. The only thing is perlite, if you're watering in pots, yeah, floats. Wash, wash away. <laughs> yeah. Um, Got to be a minute. But, I mean, I will say on that note, it's commercial growing places, this is a big issue because they're dealing with millions of dollars in seeds and crops. Right. For the home gardener, just plant an extra few plants, you know. And, I mean, just like uh, germination rate, your success rate will be different. What about for your rose seedlings? Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. <laughs> Um, I, damping off was a, a huge problem for me before I was using the, the sterile soil or covering it. Like when I gave you guys um, uh, starting this, seeds. the seeds, I yeah. put seed starting soil over the top. But I would have all these seed, rose seedlings germinate and go out there the next day and they're all dead. Well, that's going to do it, gang. Thank you so much for tuning in. Those on BizTalk Radio, the rest of you on Facebook Live each Hey, is it week. too late to plant bulbs? I know, right? <laughs> well, Rick, Rick, real quick. Rick is asking. You can plant um, all the summer flowering bulbs get planted now. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's probably too late for fall bulbs. Yes. Okay. That said, we will see you next week. Have yourself a safe rest of your weekend, President's Day weekend. And, of course, uh, upcoming next weekend, we are back in studio. Brian Maine, John Bagnasker, Tiger Palafox. Enjoy yourself. Thank you for supporting Garden America. Take care.